According to the New York Times, Vice President Kamala Harris is frustrated with not being able to define herself as Veep beyond being the first woman, the first African-American, and the first Asian-American ever to serve in the role. John Morgan, a prominent Democratic fundraiser, told the Times, I can't think of one thing she's done except stay out of the way and stand behind him at certain ceremonies. This comes as reports note, if the 80-year-old Joe Biden runs for re-election as widely expected, Harris would likely remain a focal point of his campaign and the target of criticisms as vote for Biden would effectively be a vote for Harris as president subsequently. So it's a recurring theme that Kamala Harris is not particularly popular, not as popular as her boss, and does not seem to be adding much to the ticket. Obviously, vice president is a weird role where there's not a lot of formal powers, and she was tasked with fixing the border issues, which she seems, which is A, a hard thing to do, and B, she seems wildly unprepared for. But uh, I don't know. She, she can't, can't seem to right the ship or, or turn it around. You know, she's not generated a lot of positive coverage for herself beyond the kind of just historic nature of her candidacy, which I, I think that narrative has kind of worn out its welcome or did maybe did very quickly. What can Kamala Harris do to be, you know, to be better perceived by, by, it's by everyone. She's not well perceived by the press or by the, uh, the you know, working people. And I, nobody really seems to care for her that much. It's, it's so sad. Um, I, it really exposes the emptiness of a certain kind of identity, politics, intersectionality, right? Because all she turned out to be, all she's been given the chance to be is just a representative of a certain gender and a certain race. And right, the, there was nothing beyond the historic nature, unlike with somebody like Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, who's so deserving of that role. So it was extremely moving, right, to see her take that position because of her accomplishments, right? Um, because she had accomplished all of that while also being representative of these underrepresented groups. I think with 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 Vice President Harris, there really is the sense that it, it ended up being just that. And I will say to all of the uh, conservatives who I hear saying that Michelle Obama is going to run in 2024, be the next nominee, I mean, I, I really feel that there is um, less and less of an appetite for someone who does little more than represent the historic achievement of underrepresented groups. And it, and it's just, you can imagine so many issues that she could have taken by the horns. She's a former prosecutor. She could have said, I'm going to take on the issue of crime. I have a, I have experience here. I'm going to be the person who gets us police reform that, that both protects black lives uh, in terms of the victims and protects black lives in terms of the perpetrators and the rights of the accused. Right. She would have been a perfect person to say, this is going to be my issue. Right. This is going to be my crusade. And she instead, ran from it. it. <laughs> exactly. She ran away from it. Tulsi Gabbard sort of hit her with it once, not very hard during a debate. And that was it. She was like, oh, I can't hand I can't stand up to take pride in my record, which. I mean, I, th this would have been the perfect time to do that. Um, everything she was given to do, she sort of seemed to be unable to, 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 to take by the horns, to have a real position on and then to pursue that. And I'm sure it's a combination of herself, but also the Biden administration. Um, you know, this, this stuff is always accumulation of, 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 of different, um, you know, uh, uh, pushes. But it, it does seem to me to be very, very tragic at the end of the day. Yeah, she wouldn't do either. She wouldn't, uh, she didn't want to renounce her past as a prosecutor right. and, and a kind of a tougher on crime person. She wanted to embrace the kind of new progressive thinking about criminal justice, but not, not, not embrace it and then acknowledge that she was changing course, right? She, so, so then she ends up in this middle ground where I don't think, where, where people who don't like her past don't believe she's really parted ways with it, and people who did like her past think she's right. kind of sold it out in, in, in a very inauthentic yeah. and insincere sort of way. So she just, she doesn't have a constituency at the end of the day. She's not, she doesn't have a constituency, like Californians, her actual constituency, when she was a senator, she wasn't going to, she was going to lose there to Yang in the primary. So she, she's not someone, she's someone who, who woke elites thinks, speaks for a representative group because she, she on the surface uh, checks off boxes or satisfies some criteria, but that's only skin deep. That's that's not having an actual constituency which resonates with the views you hold, which which you can have that. You, you can have 
women uh, feel that way about you, black people, Asian people, other minorities, interest group, you know, people who care about inequality or people who care about the federal government coming after them or people who are passionate about COVID. They, they find people who are credible on those issues. That's just not what was done in this case. The Biden's team or whoever ultimately made this decision said, oh, well, she's, there's two boxes. Check, check. Great. Good to go. Or three boxes. And, uh, yeah, and that, that's and, just showing uh, the hollowness of that philosophy, exposing it. Right. Uh, so Adam Coleman, who's joined us on this show, writes for us at Newsweek. He wrote a great piece um, called Kamala Harris is a diversity hire. And he really argued that um, there's something that is very insulting to qualified black and female candidates for anything, right? Whether it's for a certain school or for a job or for a vice presidency in picking someone just because they ticked those boxes the way that President Biden assured us was what he was planning to do with the vice presidency and then the Supreme Court justice. Um, there's something very insulting about it because it puts you in the box of someone like Kamala Harris, who it's, you know, would she have been able to achieve this? Would she have been put in this position if she didn't tick those boxes? It's very hard to imagine that she would have been. Um, and, and it really does, it, it you know, I've, I've always supported affirmative action, but it, it really that this is the case to not support it right because of the demeaning impact it has on all of the people who are legitimately striving and legitimately talented from those same marginalized communities who have to see themselves in the same category well and it's different from you use it's a great example you used uh the katanji brown jackson example for the supreme court you know there you have so let's say you have you know you have a short list of 10 basically equally candidate, all exceptional candidates from your perspective, from a democratic progressive perspective, 10 who are, you know, at this elitist, elite level, very distinguishable, but all super qualified and would all be great picks from your perspective. And you say, okay, and then among the, these 10, is there some, yeah, they're all great. They're all basically equal great. Is there someone who, if we added it, then we, you know, we can nod to this kind of diversity, or, you know, make the court seem more representative of Americans. I think that's a very different thing from say, from what happens in the Kamala Harris case, where you just say, no, that my, my VP needs to check as many boxes as possible and, and I'm not I'm not thinking more deeply about who the most qualified person is or or, who, or whose you know b b uh, work as a legislator and as a political figure is the most inspiring and the most in keeping with the kind of constituency, the kind of consensus I'm trying to build. Like that that work was just not done in that case. Unlike in the Supreme Court case, where where no, they're vetting the people for their ideas, and then among a couple very qualified people you know, they're employing some kind of uh, diversity criteria. You know, that I think is very different than uh, than than what Biden's team did. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, the fact that uh, Karen Bass was right there <laughs> and they went with Kamala Harris just proves exactly what you're saying. She was more qualified. She had a more progressive record, very good on economic policy, really, really brilliant, uh, you know, manages to land. But I think that they felt that, well, what if she, if people looked at her and thought, oh, she's too progressive, right? They wanted Harris because she was sort of somebody you could project onto, meaning they really did sort of choose her just for these identity categories. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's I, I think it's backfired on them because, uh, because yeah. really, I, I, I expect Biden wishes he could have a different vice president at this point, but the political headache of trying to replace her would be more trouble than it's worth. So, you know, when people say, well, then he'll, he, isn't he just going to replace her? I, she would not go quietly into the night. So it, that would just be, <laughs> that would be a headache. Like, why give himself that headache? So I, I think, I think it will be the Biden-Harris team. I know that's the boring answer. Everyone wants something exciting to happen. But she would have to willingly step aside, and I don't know why she would do that uh, unless she got... She'd have to get promised a Supreme Court seat, although even that, that's way more work than being vice president. Why would you want to switch one for the other? So uh, I, I, it's going to be, I think it's going to be Biden-Harris again. We'll see. You can call me out if I'm wrong. But uh, that's my prediction. We'll have more rising right after this. Stay tuned.